Abraham meets Melchizedek. Watch the story. Abraham gives the tithe to Melchizedek. And the Bible says that Levi, who was in his loins, that means generations down, gave the tithe. This guy was my great, great, great grandfather. And he gave what Jesus wanted. What he did would become my tithe. How many of our grandfathers walked away like this man? Now, why am I telling you this, my dear friends? It's called super erogation. Yeah, I, I really, I don't know. I just feel, you know, when, it, when we're approaching the end of the year, it's the end of, I mean, we all have seasons, but it is a significant shift of the season because the whole world is moving towards that end and that new beginning. Okay, and there's a lot happening in the realm of the spirit and there's a lot of things that we can erogate, okay, that we can erogate now before we cross over, okay? And I'd like to make sure all of us do that to the best of our abilities, okay? We don't carry any baggage that we don't want to carry into 2024, okay? We don't want to carry anything that, that it's weighing you down, be sensitive to it, dump that thing. Now don't dump your husbands and your wives for heaven's sake, okay? Dump that baggage, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's poison. It's poison, it's offense, it's unforgiveness, it's um, a, a, a not heeding his voice, not de delayed obedience to something that uh, the, the, the Spirit of God is leading you to. It is unresolved business, it is postponement, um, it is just, you know, all these different things. You know what I'm talking about, right? We have to be sensitive to those things. Uh, I, I think we need to be sensitive of when we're in the flesh, and when we're in the spirit. You know how to tell the difference, right? When you're in the spirit doesn't mean when I'm worshipping, I'm in the spirit. No, you can be in your flesh and worshipping. Okay? There, there's certain different things that you bring into alignment. There's nothing wrong with flesh as long as it's submitted to spirit. Okay? And I was just thinking and I was, I was worshipping. I have so many different plans. I want to do, I want to do, I want to do this. Fiona wants to do that. And I, I've plotted it out on my planner. And then I was like, uh, Lord, uh, by any chance, if there's anything you want to squeeze in there, take over. Take over because all this comes in subject to you. And, as, and not only that, I want to align all the things I want to do. I want to attach it with your purposes. Otherwise, I don't really want to do them. I don't really want to do them. They're, they're, they're powerless, meaningless, and a waste of time for me. Okay, so... Okay, so I want to, uh, I know there are a lot of people having their birthdays today and tomorrow, but this is a special one. He is the oldest member now established of our congregation, okay? He's also uh, my precious dad in, in Christ, uh, and Kirby's daddy, Uncle Loney. Okay, he's celebrating his 80th birthday tomorrow, and I want the whole of WOW family to just stretch out their hands as Kirby says a special prayer with all of you in agreement. Amen. Father, we just praise you. We give you honor and glory. We thank you for these awesome 80 years, Lord. And we know, Lord, that you've taken him through a journey. And we know, Lord, that at 80, at this season, Lord, you can still do miracles. You still are moving. You still are God. You still are king over our lives. And we still believe you, even for that at 80, that even that wheelchair, that he can get out of that one day, that he'll be able to walk again, that he'll be able to be strong again. Lord, if there's any time in any season, we're ready now, oh God. Father, so we bless Loni Delanerol with everything we got from the bottom of our hearts with the bestest and the most blessed blessing that we can give in Jesus' mighty name. Dad, may you be blessed, may you be strong, okay? And may your latter days truly, that promise be true upon your life, be much greater than your past. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That's the challenge, right? To believe like you would if you were a teenager. Can you believe for that? Can you, and, and that's what we believe. And I, and, I, and, I, and I think that if we can maintain that, we can do great things. Okay? And I think that's what today is about. And that's what the series is about. It's about faith. Okay? It's about faith. And I really feel, and I've been feeling this over the last two days, I think that the Lord wants to deposit. Like, I feel like a, 
um, like something wanted to press in and incarnate, like a, a fresh, fresh measure of the faith of Christ. And I think that's what we need, you know, because I don't ever want, I mean, plateaus are good because you need to linger for a while, you need to dwell, you need to, maybe you can set up camp and enjoy it, but it's temporary. We want to keep moving and we want to keep progressing. And this is not, this is not a message Neither is our faith or our belief or the reason why we stepped in to do what we're doing. It was never about something mediocre. Um, because honestly, who's into mediocrity? Okay, uh, we can get mediocrity in the world. You can get even excellence in the world. We want something super excellent. Okay, we want something supernatural. I don't want anything, and I know I speak for all of you as well, we don't want anything just natural and just bland and just vanilla. <laughs> okay, we want something crazy. But I think in order to do that, all of us need to be pushed off the edge now and again because we kind of settle in and we look all respectable and decent and we do not want to look undignified. But I think we need to be ready for that. And I feel like, you know, like in those early days when you first encountered him and everything was just moving and you saw like tremendous, let's always have that. Why do we need to plateau? Because there is more. There's always more. It's an endless well that you can drink from. It's an endless stream that never ends. Okay, and it feeds and it's, it's, it's without limit. It's without end. And that's who he is. And that's what faith is. Okay, because like Abraham, Abraham was so, uh, um, his eyes were so much on the earth. It's like, give me a promised child. I want my son. I want a son of my loins. I, wanna, I want descendants. I want to have a child. I want it to be mine. I, you know, I want my name to go on. And he was looking at the natural so much. And God said, Abraham, my son, lift up your eyes. Look up at the stars. For as many as the stars in the sky, there will be your descendants. Is that naturally possible? No. No. And I feel the Lord is telling us today, lift up your eyes, wow. Lift up your eyes from your, even if you're making millions of rupees or dollars or whatever, even if you're, you know, building your whatever empire, even if your families are doing so well, it's limited. It is so limited. I mean, I, 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 trust me, I know I came from a very rich family. Okay, there was enough to go around, but I didn't get much. <laughs> okay, my dad did leave us an inheritance. Thank God, he's blessed. But compared to what his family had, there's nothing. There's nothing. I have my family here. Go, where? <laughs> show me the money. Show me, show me the glory of the former days of my ancestors. But... I, I have a greater glory now. You have a greater glory now. A glory that is without end. A glory that is without limit. A glory that never puts the lid on you. Never tells you that's enough. A glory that can tell Uncle Loni you can have it all again. And more. And that's what we have to keep. That's who our God is. Blood was shed for this. His blood was shed so that we can shift out. Yes, we honor our natural lineage. We honor it. We honor the bloodlines, but I would put it down in an instant for what he has given us. When he circumvented the bloodlines with his blood. He circumvented the bloodlines with his blood so that now we don't have to feel, oh, I wish I was born into this family, that family, royal family, whatever family, this talent, that talent. We don't have to feel that way. We can have it all. What is it that you want? Do you want it enough? That's the only thing. Do you intend for it enough? Have you super dutied yourself enough for that thing? Because that is yours by faith. By faith. That's the family that we belong to. That's what we said yes to when we said yes to Christ. Whatever your problem, whatever your issue, whatever that hurdle, whatever the mountain, whatever the debt, whatever the problem, you name it. He is the solution, and we have an endless supply of that solution, that glory that we can now dwell in and bask in. And we've gone through the series to arrive at this point. We've gone through offense. We've gone through uh, getting over offense. Okay, we've gone through forgiveness. I can't tell you enough, wow. 
if your conscience is seared, if your conscience is not in a place of truth, if you are not taking this word and allowing it to minister to your hearts and really taking it in and saying, I will be in truth. I will not be hurt anymore. I will not be offended anymore. I will give it up to God. I will, I will confront who I need to confront in love. I will sort it out. I will get over myself. I will stop taking myself so seriously. If you can't do that, your faith is shipwrecked. Your faith is shipwrecked. Okay? A pure conscience is what holds up faith. A pure conscience. You have all the, the, the technology. You have the blood. You have the word. You have the spirit. So you have no excuse. You have no excuse. You must leave all that baggage behind this year. And let's cross over together. Okay? And believe for greater things as a family. If 12 disciples could shake and rock the nation and are still doing it. And their blood is still saying, come on, cheering you on. Let's do it. What can't wow do? Come on. With the word that we have. Are you ready now, guys? Please give it up for Kay. <laughs> The house is full. This is Wow Life Church. Take a seat. It's going to be an awesome service. Woo! Okay. Phenomenal. I can feel the presence. I can feel the glory. Thank you for being here. It's a Tuesday, but we are full. And thank you, Jesus. Okay. You guys love the word, and I love you for loving the word. It's awesome. Okay. So, this is really cool. Uh, you must understand that we are... Can you feel the presence in the house? Can you feel, you see, yeah, can you feel the presence? Yeah, you can, right? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, if you can't feel what's going on, man, you need to check with your dead, right? Because I'm telling you, the presence, this, this, now is awesome. Okay? And I can feel that this service is going to be really interesting. It's going to be one of those, it's going to be one of those, yeah. It's going to be one of those meetings, I'm telling you. Because the, 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 the glory in the room now is a very, very nice, um, a nicer, <laughs> <laughs> one of those, <laughs> it's one of those glories, okay? It, this glory can get you drunk, okay? So trust me, it can get you really full of the spirit. It can get you, it can, it can get you very happy, okay? Because God is doing a new thing, and I can tell you, Fiona and I were sitting discussing today. We're like, can you feel the glory? Can you feel the glory? And the whole day we were like, can you feel that? Can you feel like the weight, you know? And so the glory is shifting. So every time we feel that, we know that our lives shift and change. Every time, every time, we never, and, and throughout, the end, throughout, the, throughout the end of a season, God is trying, he's trying to say, get ready, get ready, I'm about to take you to the next level, okay? And to get to the next level, you have to have a new inside, okay? You have to have a new mind, you have to have a new heart. What is, what is coming in, in 2024 is different to what was in 2023. If 2023 was good, my God, 2024 is going to be awesome, okay? You got it. It's going to be unbelievable, but you can't go with the same suit. You just get it. Yeah, wow, this is awesome. Come and lift your hands up in your glory. Come, on. just feel it. If you can't feel it, just say, Lord, just let me feel the presence. If you've never felt the presence of God, and it's the first time you're in this place, and never felt the presence of God, I'm really, 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 really bad for you. So I'm going to pray for you, okay? The presence of God feels like something. Okay, it feels like something that you're, you're, you're touching your hands. It's tangible. It comes on you like a cloak, and it's over each one today. Right now, it's each, over each one of you now. In the name of Yahushua, right now, and we declare miracles, we declare signs, we declare wonders. We declare God to move over his people in power today, oh God. That people's lives will be changed forever. That people are going to go back completely transformed today. This is your season, this is your time. Watch what happens. God is good. Woohoo! Come on. Wow, Wildlife Church. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to share something. It may be because of the word they're going to preach today. Maybe the glory is because of the word. How many of you have gold dust on your hands? Just check. And they ask me, I mean, you're not doing any Christmas packing at the moment, right? Okay. Because if I ask you next week, it might be too, too late. Okay. Okay. How many of you have actual gold dust on your hands right now? Okay. Can you see? Can, can you see? Can you see? Can you, can you see? If you've never seen gold dust on your hands, it's coming right now because the glow, this glory brings signs and wonders. These are signs and wonders glory. Yeah. Is it there? Is it there? Yeah. Come on. This whole... Come on, these guys, yeah, these, these guys have all got it, yeah. This, guy, this guy's got it, got it. Oh, 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 my God, on his face. Big ones, on his face, on your face. Massive ones. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But it's massive, massive on the face, massive on the face, yeah. And this is not makeup, okay? Uh, all right. So, so, so sweetheart, 
I'm saying God is moving. Okay? And God is moving and he's going to change your life. And God is in this house. We can feel him. He's tangible today. He's palatable today. And maybe because, it's maybe because I prepared this message. Okay? It may be. Okay? Because I promise you, church in Sri Lanka, the USA have heard this before. You guys have never heard where I'm going to preach. Ever before. Okay? USA got this first at ReChurch. Okay? And you're going to hear it again in a completely different way. Okay? But you're going to hear it for the first time. And all this that I've done so far is so that I can just bring you slightly into this right now. And it's just the opening of what we call super duty, the field of super irrigation. Okay? If you see what I'm saying, everything changes. You'll understand why I do what I'm doing. You'll understand why I'm calling the way I'm called. You'll understand why you are sitting here in this church. You'll understand why you are a WOW Life member. You understand it. And you'll understand your call and your purpose in the world just a little bit. It's just going to open up today. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. What is that? What happened? Anything happened? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So watch this, okay? You're free if you feel miracles are happening, okay? I'm telling you right now, in this, in this atmosphere right now, people are getting healed. I'm telling you. There are people who came here, you came here with like pain in your body, uh, like your back were hurting. There's a, right now, right here, there was someone's neck who was hurting right here. Okay, yeah, right here, there's someone's neck, yeah, yeah, your neck here, right? Yeah, but hurting, right? Yeah, yeah, but check now, check now, check now, check now, yeah. Check now, I'm telling you, huh? Go on. What is that? I met with an accident when I was coming here, and I, when I was walking up, I told Natasha, my neck is really hurting. Wow. It's gone. Done. You see, when I came here, you see the glory. See, so when the glory is like this, I, I hear God like very clearly because it's tangible. So when I walked here, the Lord said, some, the neck, this neck, and you see, I could, I, could, I could move my neck. So that's, that's how it works. You know, I couldn't like move my neck. Oh my God, neck is stuck. So I knew there's something here. So you met with an accident? Yeah. How, how is it now? Gone. 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 Yeah. What about you, madam? What about your neck? How is it? It's, it's fine. It's gone. Fine. Yeah. Gone. Not bad. Isn't that cool? But you see, it doesn't happen always like that. It doesn't happen always like that. Yeah? It, there are certain times when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon a meeting. This is one of those meetings. Yeah? This is one of those meetings. I'm telling you, you are, you are blessed if you're here because the Spirit of the Lord is covering this place. You see, you see the gold dust on them? Yeah, you see the gold dust on them? Yeah? How many of you have gold dust here? How many of you had gold dust here? Check. I'm telling you, check. You had gold dust. Rosh, you had gold dust. Yeah? Okay? Now, why is the gold that's happening? Why, why is this, this lot getting healed like this and getting drunk? Can you see? They're getting drunk like this? Okay? Because God is pouring out His Spirit. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with them laughing. I'm not saying anything funny. You must understand. I'm not that funny. I'm not that good. I'm good. But not that good. Okay? They're laughing because the Holy Spirit, if you're new, the Holy Spirit is moving. And when the Holy Spirit moves, it brings joy. Yeah? Don't you want to laugh when nothing is funny? Some of you need to laugh. because <laughs> Some of you trust me. Yeah, nothing is funny in your life. Yeah. <laughs> nothing is funny in your life at this moment of time. But the Holy Spirit needs coming to you and give you a true joy that you need to laugh when nothing is funny. Okay? When you can get there, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know you're in the presence of God. When everything is ugly in your life, when everything is ugly in your life, huh? Okay. Everything is ugly. Okay, how about these guys? These guys are okay? Yeah. Uh, when everything is ugly in your life and you can laugh, you know it has to be God, right? Okay? All right? So there's some ugly around here as well. Okay? I'm not, I'm not looking at faces. I'm looking at lives. Okay? But I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit moves in you, you can laugh when things are ugly. Just imagine what, yeah, that's right. Just imagine what happens when it happens. Okay? It gives a message to the, at yeah, yeah, that's right. It gives a message to the atmosphere that we are the ones called... Isaac. Who is Isaac? The new Jerusalem. We are the ones who laugh in the times of trouble. We are the ones who laugh when the devil is attacking us. Sorry, there was a lot of spit. Sorry. <laughs> it's anointed, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Okay? You see, the atmosphere is different today because God is pouring out a new revelation. Come on, yeah. And I love Tuesday. I love Tuesday because if you, got, if you come on a Tuesday, okay, I'm going to give you a little more. Okay? Just for a little season, yeah? You get Sunday, you're going to get a lot. On Tuesday, you're going to get a little bit of overflow, okay? All right? Is that okay? All right. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
Let's turn to uh, Mark 10. Okay, this is really, really cool. Mark 10. Okay, Mark 10 says it like this. Wow, this is just amazing. Just amazing, amazing. I'll tell you, when I, when, when I heard that song, you know, um, uh, worthy is your name, Jesus. I, oh, man. When you, when you, you just worship him when you hear this stuff. You just worship him. Because, like, who could have orchestrated stuff like this? Who could have planned our lives the way he has? It's just amazing. You can't even put this together. I think that was the biggest shock when Jackie came to the Lord. She's a very intelligent girl. And so when she came to the Lord, what she realized was she started, she's a Bible nerd. So she started reading the Bible. And, man, I tell you, if you don't read the Bible, you're missing out, man. If you don't have this book, like, underneath your pillow, and you're not picking it up, all, something's wrong. Okay, you don't, you're not understood. This is amazing. Okay? I mean... How did it all come together like this? Like, the, the plan, like, who could have even master planned it? You couldn't think about it. And that's what Jack, got, got Jackie. She said, there's no way that things can synchronize in the way it is and come together like this. It's impossible. Am I correct, Jacqueline? Yeah? That's what really that brought you home. Now, here we are. Okay. So, we're going to John 10. I'm, I'm going to synthesize, synthesize it all together. Is that okay? You're going to synthesize a lot of it? And then, then I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to give you, like, a window to put your head in today, okay? Right? Okay, just a window, Okay. And then it's going to be awesome. And then from there, we're going to talk this much more in the next season. Okay? Right. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Mark 10. Mark 10. Yeah, Mark 10. Mark 10. Mark 10. Don't worry. Don't, it's okay if you're getting distracted and say, oh, I go to church and people are laughing at church. <laughs> Brother, where do you want them to laugh at? Them? <laughs> Outside of church. This is the best place to laugh. Do you know that Zion, the word Zion means a city of joy. You understand? Isaac means son of promise, the one who laughs. Okay? So, please go ahead and laugh. Don't worry. You won't disturb me. You'll just upset a whole lot of religious people. When I say... <laughs> but the spiritual ones will understand what's going on. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Now, okay. Here we are. Mark 10. I'm trying to find my scriptures. Okay. All right. All right. Mark 10. Here we are. So good. This is so good. Oh my God. I sat here. I think I said, I told Tammy, I turned around Tammy and said, Tammy, people are going to get drunk today. I said, people are going to get drunk today. Can, can you feel the atmosphere? Yeah. You have to understand, you have to be able to discern the spirit. The spirit wants to do something. You might want to do something, but the spirit wants to do something else. Okay. Okay. Mark 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the rich man. The rich man comes to Jesus, okay? And Jesus literally tells, I'll preach to these guys because they're laughing. <laughs> okay? So, the rich man comes to Jesus, okay? And uh, he says, how do I inherit eternal life? And um, what, what they say is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, people take themselves, sorry, I, I get distracted. You know, people take themselves so seriously. Yeah. <laughs> people take themselves, don't take yourself so seriously, brother. I've been there. <laughs> okay? I've been there. People think, they say, oh, 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 Kirby, it's a church. You know, no one should be laughing. I say, why? why? Oh, oh, shh. God is in the house. Don't talk. You see? This is not that type of church. God is in a good mood here. He's with his children. He's with his sons. God loves his sons. He's in a good mood here. And he might be in a bad mood somewhere else. I'm not saying no. Okay? <laughs> I mean, he might be in a bad mood somewhere else, but we teach that God is in a good mood here. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. All right, okay. Now, and if, you're, if you're laughing is coming, just get healed, brother, healed. It means you take yourself too seriously. It's okay, all right? All right, now, Mark 10. The rich man comes. He comes to Jesus. Okay, what do I need to inherit eternal life? What happens? He says, Jesus tells, uh, he tells the, rich, uh, he tells the uh, rich man, he says, look, you know what? To inherit eternal life, you're going to follow the law of Moses, honor your father and mother, do not steal. Is it there? Do not bear false witness. Is it there? Yeah? And he answered and said, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Oh my God, what an amazing guy. Bless his, bless his soul. Because I mean, I mean, very hard to find a guy like that in a church today. I mean, just imagine, huh? Okay, I, I, I've done all this, okay? Then Jesus looking at him, loved him. Wow. Did he say, no, you self-righteous Pharisee? Like we say. No, he didn't, right? He didn't say you self-righteous Pharisee. He's like, wow. He said, you're really cool, man, you know? He said, Jesus looked at me and loved him. Okay, that's what, what do we need to look at. So, he's cool. That means, he's got it. What has he got? What Jesus wanted. What he wanted, sorry. What was that? Salvation. Eternal life. Do you just get it? Okay, so that's done. Okay. 
Then Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, One thing. Huh. One thing you lack. Wow. And then he goes and tells him one thing. Go and sell all you have and go and give, uh, give it and then come and follow me. But he said, as the one thing was taken, you see, because of salvation he has. Heaven he has. That's what he asked. Jesus said, this is what you need to get to heaven. Huh? He said, no problem. He said, I do all that. He said, wow, cool. He says, but this one thing, okay? And, but Jesus said to this boy, this, uh, there, okay, well, and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Okay. Where, where, where are we? Okay, all right, I'm sorry. Then Jesus looked at him and loved him. Not my fault, your fault. Okay. Then Jesus looked at him and loved him and said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come take up my, the cross and follow me. Wow, you see? Okay, what an invitation. What an amazing invitation. Take up the cross, brother. Take up the cross and follow me. Wow. Okay. I do all the good. I give the poor. I'm, I go to church every day. I, I'm part of the leadership. And, you know, I do everything, you know. I sow. I give my tithes. I give my offerings and all that. There's one thing, brother. Okay. And some of you, is not this thing. Okay. We have most of these guys. This one being number one. Okay. <laughs> He gives this thing. He, he can give his money anytime. So Jesus won't ask for that one thing. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Yeah. That one thing he can easily give. He has passed the test. Huh? No problem. <laughs> this guy, he won't ask you for that one thing. Sell all your stuff. No chance. Not these ones. No. No chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. These ones. They'll give everything. Sell everything. Give everything. Die and kill. But still, Jesus will say, there's one thing. Hmm? Okay? But that is not to get heaven, because all these guys will get to heaven. Huh? Okay. But it's for something. And then, okay. He couldn't, and he said, but he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So that one thing was great. Okay? And then keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay? And then this hard, how hard is it for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven and all that? Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. So they, and they were greatly astonished, verse 26. The disciples saying among themselves, who then can be saved? You see? Jesus looked at them and said, with many it is impossible, with God all things are possible. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, listen carefully. Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels. Okay, watch this who shall not receive a hundredfold now in, say, in this time. In this time. Say, in this time. In this time. In this time. Not when you're in heaven? Hmm? In this time. Why are you not having, in this time, what you want? One thing. One thing. Not a thousand things. Not, it might not be cars and houses, because cars, houses, are come on, I I can ask. Today I asked the guy on the phone, I was saying, look, I'm doing something in the USA. Today, I just, just, I mean, just, not even four or five hours ago, six hours ago, I called one of my guys in the US and I said, look, I'm doing something in the US, I need your support. He's worried about $300 million. I said, I need about $200,000 for sure, you need to make sure that you support me and give that to me. No problem, January. 70 million bucks, not bad. Just make sure you support. That's it. So anytime he, that, so that is not a problem for him either. Huh? But there'll be one thing. If you want more than the 300 million dollars in this lifetime. <laughs> He's already made it. 150, 200, 300 million dollars is a lot of money. Okay? But in this time you want a hundredfold that, it'll cost you that one thing. <laughs> it'll cost you that one thing. You have power, you have influence, you've been raised up today, you're happy with your life. Hmm? Now, and you want to go beyond where you are in 2024? It'll cost you that one thing. 
You know your one thing. I know my one thing for sure. I'm self-reflecting. No one can point at me and say, Kirby, this is a habit or problem that you have. Okay, no one can tell me that I didn't know, that I'm so surprised. I don't go for prophetic meetings and prophets come and prophesy and say, this is one thing, brother, that I'm going to tell you. And I'm like, oh, really? My God. <laughs> I, I don't go for prophetic meetings, listen, wanting prophets to prophesy over me. I know exactly me. I know the one thing. And I plan for the one thing. A hundredfold is on its way. It's on its way. Watch and see. Watch and see. Okay? Now, why am I saying this? Because, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. God is so awesome. When he set up a church, you must understand that every single person from the time of humanity that sin, iniquity, selfishness, and all kinds of things have now been compounded into every generation. Like Fiona started saying, like her, she came from a rich family. What is left over from the riches? How is your grandfather? Just I'm asking you a simple question. Did they have more than you? Most people here will say that their grandfather had more. Most people will say yeah. Yeah. that their grandfather had more. Yeah. How many of you can say that your grandfather had more? Yeah. Okay, for sure, lands is in 100%. Did they have, does your grandfather have more land than you? Just raise your hand if, you, if it's right, on, right or wrong. Okay, you see, most people. Okay, so what has now been left over is a compounded iniquity and a payment that you're paying for generational issues. That you're paying now. Okay, and when you, man, if you are not a part of this church or a part of any church, you would also leave nothing for your children except for the disease that you carry in your blood. Okay, and it's called generational iniquity. It's passed down through the blood. So because of this, you must understand what happens is this generational sin and these generational problems, what happens is that these iniquities that are passed down and passed down and passed down, when is it going to stop? Yeah. When is it going to stop? Come on. The father sees this. Sends his son as a man takes the iniquity and the sin of all men, and that blood that passes the disease and the sickness, the inheritance, how you got nothing is through your blood, no? Yes. Yes. What does he do with it? He sheds the blood. Sheds it up to water. That means it is completely shed. Why? So that now you don't have to now come under your bloodlines. Did you just get it? Okay, this is important, guys. So therefore, God gave us the church. Because the church, what the church does, it's very interesting what the church does. You see, what happens if this guy uh, actually sold all his houses and stuff like that? Do you know what would have happened? If he sold all his houses, he would have got a hundredfold, okay, in his lifetime, but his righteousness of what he did would get embanked with the church. I'll show it again. When Levi, when Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek, remember the story? It says that Levi, listen carefully, gave the tithe to Melchizedek. Does it say that? When he was in Abraham's loins. Oh my God, did you just get what I just said? Watch this. If that rich guy was my grandfather, that dude, if he was my grandfather, and if he gave to Jesus then, to the church, watch what, what would have happened. If Levi could give a tithe to Abraham, to Melchizedek, come on, and because... Levi was not even born. The priestly tribe was not even born. Abraham meets Melchizedek. Watch the story. Abraham gives the tithe to Melchizedek. And the Bible says that Levi, who was in his loins, that means generations down, gave the tithe. If this guy was my great, great, great grandfather, and he gave what Jesus wanted, Today, 
what he did would become my pride. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yes, because you got it, right? How many of our grandfathers walked away like this man? How many grandfathers walked away like this man? Hmm? How many? If my grandfather, in the same unction that is coming into your heart for that one thing, the same unction that man's testing that day is your testing today, brother. It's in your heart now. And when you walk away today, like he walked away then. A generation suffers. This is not blood, brother. If you're a leader in this house, you're a father. You cover these people. These people sit on their seats. Why do people, I'm asking a question, simple question, huh? Why do people who come to WOW get rich? Rich church, rich people. You come, two months, I'll give you two months, three months, bang, 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 different things change. New cars, houses, promotions. Why? Huh? Have sown. But our leaders have sown. Yeah. Thank you, Raj. First time he came to church. It didn't take him 10 days. Here, yeah, these ones. These ones. Talk to them. Talk to them. <laughs> huh? I told you to come on Tuesday, you get a special. <laughs> Just understand, guys. Just understand what is going on here. Huh? I just gave you insight, huh? Because we had a couple of people in the room now, huh? Okay, your, your, eyes, your ears and eyes are blessed to understand who you're dealing with. We talk about wow, leaders. That's why, my we don't take offering from you. Now, why am I telling you this, my dear friends? It's called super erogation. <laughs> if we walk away like this guy, if Philip walked away, if we walk away, okay, it passes down to you. You understand that? If I don't give that one thing now, believe me, brother, you won't give that one thing. I can't even ask you. Hmm? Because I'm ready to give the one thing anytime that's the type of leadership you got you will find it easier to give up that one thing. It's called faith. It's called faith. Hebrews 11 talks about the fathers of faith. What they're passing down is their faith. What you're getting today is the faith. If I can do it, if they can do it, for what? We're doing it because we have faith in God that he can change and transform a nation. We trust Jesus. We love him with all we've got. We're not hypocrites about it. And that's why also we are like the way we are. I'm not running behind people to say hello to them. Hmm? I'm not trying to go out there and canvas to become big. Not interested. We live for God. If we have to die, we die for God. And I want people like that in this church. Now, why am I saying this? Because I want people, when they come, to be blessed. It's not about taking from them. They need to be blessed. They need to get promoted. Things need to happen in their lives. Because people are ready to give their one thing. It's called super irrigation. Okay, now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, are you, are you, are you, are you clear there? Okay. So now watch Paul in Colossians. Are you ready? Okay. Colossians says this. We will do. Yeah, Colossians says this. I'll get it going. Okay. Colossians says this. Now, are you ready? Yeah. It's so good, so good. I mean, God, I mean, this is amazing stuff. When I got this stuff, I'll tell you. They say, Kirby, so you went breatharian, you didn't eat for five years. Yeah, well, I ate, but I ate very little. I fasted for five years, but I ate yeah. very little. But for about seven months or nine months or something like that, I ate very little. I was like this. No one has to wonder whether I'm eating or not. When you see me, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> But why? 
because I have to do this. It's called super irrigation. Then to the mouth villa. Then what can I do? Now I can eat. I can afford to get a bit chubby. <laughs> I've done it. People come to this church, they find it easy to fast. They came to the church. All types of fast, anyone can easy to fast. They can, people come into this church, or every addiction is broken now. They say, my child, you go to Kirby's church, well, you know, you're not drinking anymore, not smoking anymore, what is going on? How does it happen? That's what I did. That's what I did for five years. Now you can have a nice glass of wine or a nice uh, single malt. Don't worry about it. That's none of your business. I did that for five years so that when people come in here, it's already done. It's a reservoir, a bank. It's a deposit account. It's a deposited account. So when people come in, suddenly addictions break away. Come on, do you get this? Do you get this? Do you get this? Leaders, do you understand this? Superrogation, I'm going to show you again. Huh? I'm going to show you again. This marriage, Borua Deneve, Atrama, it's perfect. Okay, perfect. There's no hypocrisy. Our eyes don't stray, our mind doesn't stray, our heart doesn't stray. Okay? So when people come to wow, marriages are broken, start getting repaired. It's called super irrigation. It's a bank, brother, a bank. It's a deposit that anyone who doesn't believe the least of you can come and draw from. It's a family of faith. You don't have to be on my blind line to get it. Those days you will have to be a Jew to have got it. You get it by faith. You come to a family and you get it by faith. Did you just get it now? Okay, now. In understanding this, let's look at this. And this is in Colossians, and it's in verse 26. Verse 26. Okay, watch. Paul now is talking about this. Okay, are you ready? Verse 26, Paul is talking about it. The mystery which has been hidden. Say it's a mystery. mystery. You never heard it before. Don't tell me you've been in some place and he's, you heard it before. You've been some. You've not heard Okay, the mystery which has been hidden from ages, from generations, never heard. It's a mystery. But now has been revealed to his saints. You got, get it there? Okay, Keep, uh, go, go, uh, go, go to 20, 25. 25, uh, this, is, this is good, yeah. Go to 24, watch this. I now rejoice, here we go, in my? For you. Hmm? For you. Okay? Why? Because I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the? Come on, that's what he's saying, right? Huh? So when the one things and one things are given, when all these guys are giving, sowing, blessing, sacrificing, what are they doing? They're filling up in their body. Huh? They're filling up in their body for the sake of the body which is the church of which I became a minister of. So I rejoice in my sufferings for I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, the church. So my question to you is, do you want to be a depositor? The Bible says that he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Hmm? Kando ni nang, eti wende kando tino. You want bread to eat? Enough. You'll always have bread to eat. Don't worry, you'll be okay, you'll be happy. You'll have provision. You'll be okay, you'll be a mediocre, brother. Okay? But if you want to go beyond, one thing. One thing. He lasts for one thing. Okay? And he says, so he says, he gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. That means the guy who eats the bread will be very happy, he'll have enough, but he won't go to the next level, my friend. You've never gone to the next level because of that one thing. He gives seed to the sower. Seed to the sower, bread to the eater. That means if you 
Eat the seed. You're an eater. If you sow the seed, you're a multiplier and so on. Did you just get it? Now, you've seen that, right? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 12, and we'll close with this. And then we'll prophesy. Come. Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13. Now, how many of you know 1 Corinthians 13 is that famous love chapter? Am I correct? Okay. Love never fails. Love always hopes. Ne? Okay. What is that then? Love always forgives. Huh? Love always. What else? What does it say about all these amazing things about love? Huh? Uh, what love? What tell me this way? These guys know. Uh, love is long suffering. Okay, some of you know that kind of love. <laughs> okay, okay, all that is there in 1 Corinthians 13. Now watch this. Love always hopes is an interesting one. Can we go there? Yeah. Bears all things, believes all things, believes all things. Hmm? The husband or the wife has come home for the tenth time, cheated on the husband and wife, and then. This chapter says, has the audacity to say that you don't love because you didn't believe. You're supposed to believe again, sister. I'm that type of church. <laughs> really? I'm saying, Borukharik, man. Divorce are gone. Divorce are gone. I'm not going to say. A serial abuser keeps hammering his wife and hammering his wife and hammering his wife and hammering his wife. And I'm supposed to say, love never fails. I say, sister, you got to bear all things. I'm that type of church? Hmm? No, sir, yes. I'm not that type of church. I'll say next time he hits you, Priyanta and the guys <laughs> will be outside his gate. <laughs> okay? So then am I going against the Bible? Hmm? Am I going against the Bible? When they say, turn the other cheek? When they say, all these things, are, am I going against the Bible? No. no. Because I'm only trying to show you that this chapter is not a compulsory chapter. Wow. Yes. It's not a compulsory chapter. Wow. Is it blasphemy? Is it blasphemy? Hmm? Watch. Watch what I'm going to show you. Because this is very hard. This is very hard, huh? Okay? Okay, go right up to the end of 12, and we'll take it from there. We'll go, we'll take it from 12. Paul now is explaining something. This is so important to get, guys. 1 Corinthians 13. Just turn it to 1 Corinthians 13. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13, and get it, get it to me while I talk. Okay? Now. Ah, this is perfect. Whoever is, Darren, uh, Anmita, you're fabulous. Okay? Okay, now, this is 12, okay? This is 12, right? Okay? Watch, I'm going to read from here. Then you'll understand what 13 is. Now, now we get into a place. I'm telling you, honestly, this is gold. When you know the word of God, it's gold. When you know Jesus, it's gold. When you hear the voice of the Lord, it's gold. When you know the word, it's gold. It changes your life. I love the word. I love Jesus. Okay? Watch what happens, okay? So... He's telling the Gentile and the heathen that if they are lacking anything, you got to come to a system that is super erogated. Yeah. Yeah. Corinthians 12. Yeah. Watch this. Keep going on top there. On top, uh, 20, 27. Now, listen carefully. Verse 27. Now, you are the body of Christ. Please, before it comes to 1 Corinthians 13, yeah. say, I'm the body of Christ. And members individually, okay? And God has appointed in the church first two apostles. Man, anyone wants to be an apostle? An apostle is the one ship that goes forward when there is a war and gets hit and hit and hit and hit and hit. It has the ability to get hammered and it breaks through the lines of defense for the Roman fleet. And he crosses to the other side. And all the ammunition has been wasted on one ship. And the apostle crosses on and lands. And all the other guys now can come. Because one guy has got all the beating. <laughs> Apostolos. Are you a heathen? You don't believe in Jesus? You don't know what a church is? Come brother. Come to church. There's someone who's taking a hammering 
for you. Paul is saying, in my body, I'm taking the beating for the sake of the church. So you have to have an apostle, brother. If you don't have an apostle in your church, you're in big trouble. I'm a prophet, slightly an apostle, get in there, slowly. Don't want to grab and take a position that I, too fast, too dangerous. People die. That's the apostle. So you come to the church. Why? Because there's already someone who's super irrigated. He's not only given his money, he's given his life, he's given his ministry, he's given his all. I met people like that. I was taught by people like that. You understand that? Who gave everything. Apostle. You got it? Why? So that when you come into the room, it doesn't have to happen to you. It doesn't have to happen to you. You don't have to get sick. He got sick. He got hit. You don't have to be betrayed. He got betrayed. You don't have to be rejected. Apostolos got rejected. Come on. What a beautiful wonder the church is. Do you get it there? Yeah. Come to the church. Huh? The body of Christ. Where God is appointed first in the church, apostles. Second, prophets. They don't get away with it. Trust me. They take the second round. But not bad. We can... You want to be a prophet? You take something. It costs you your life. You get hammered. You take everything. So you, then you... This is a bank, a reservoir. Then it's a smaller bank. Okay? Then the next one. Huh? What is that? Teachers. Pastors. You get it? And then administrations. And so therefore the banks are now coming. One bank, next bank, next bank, next bank. So that the believer can just walk through this door and we say, you're healed. And they get healed. Because these guys took it. First, Jesus, the cornerstone. He laid down his life. He had to die. The apostles had to die. You understand that? Then the, then the prophets, then the pastors, they take it and then you make a safe environment that can take the load that you can come in and load shall in a moment, in a minute, without even knowing. It's called a church community. And you're walking to the room and you're just a believer and you'll get blessed because Jesus, the cornerstone, took the most, then the apostles, then the prophets, then pastors. And so you have to set this thing up wonderfully and beautifully. We know how to do it, brother. This is 800 years in the blood of doing this stuff. 800 years in the blood. Okay, Huguenot. Okay? Now, just understand. Once they have done all that, and we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 13, you see? And so, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Okay, keep going. All right? Verse 31. He says, now if you want to come, you come like that. And then there is a time in your life that you will have to become a part of that bank. Hmm. You understand that? But you don't have to give what the apostles prophets gave. But God will say, hey, you know what? Do you want to be a part of this community? It's going to cost you that, that, that one thing. You know that one thing, no? You're angry with so-and-so. You're bitter with so-and-so. Forgive Mm -hmm. Go beyond the duty. He'll ask, you know that, that thing that you like your sugar so much? Huh? This season, I'm asking for the one thing. Give it. Now what are you doing? You're becoming a living stone and adding to the banking system, the deposits that we're having. So more people come, more people come, more people come. God will ask you. He'll tell you, you know that anger problem that you have? That's the one. This season, let it go. You're know, depositing it. Okay. Do you just get it? Okay. And then you become one of the depositors so that another guy who doesn't know God can come and draw on it. That's why we do church. Do you just get that? Okay, now watch this, okay? So he says, so you, you have a church, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers. Okay? Now he's getting that one thing. That is the super duty. You don't have to do it. Now remember the guy who slaps you all the time? Now turn the other cheek. You know that boss who is a menace to you all the time? Stay there a little longer. You know that leader who is over you all the time that you don't like? Stay a little longer. I, you, know that, you, know, you know in a certain church I went to, I was the leader of evangelism. They kept me as a catcher. 
because they didn't like the miracles. I waited there for four years, catching people, because they didn't want me to preach because they didn't like the miracles. But I'm a elder. I never got offended or anything like that. When the time was right, I went to the pastor and said, Pastor, you know, Pastor Neil, I said, he, he actually offered me a place in his church. I said, if you don't mind, I'd like to leave. Not with any kind of offense or bitterness. Because I deposit, that's why I can, I can tell you what to do. You see? Super duty. So once you come to a system like this, now let me show you the turned out of cheek. Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all inter interpret? Are, you, are all apostles? Are all teachers? Are all prophets? Listen carefully, verse 31. But earnestly desire to be some of these. Hmm? And yet let me show you a more excellent way. Did you just see that there? Did you get it or not? It's not a compulsory thing. He said you can do this. But as, oh, come on, you can load it, load it, load it. And one day you'll come to a place where God will say, come, give me that. Then you're going to show a more excellent way than what you already are in. That's when you get promoted, brother. You see, he says, all this is there. Huh? But let me show you a more excellent way. Now go to the love chapter and see it there. You see, now he says, now if you do this, when someone slaps you on one cheek, you give the other cheek. When someone takes one cloak, you give the second cloak. You got it? Okay? Keep going, keep going, keep going to the, the, the one, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Okay? Keep going, keep going, keep going to the love. Love suffers long now and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. You see? Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So now if you want to stay in that marriage, it's a super duty. God considers it now an offering of worship. You don't have to. You want to stay in a job with your boss hammering you and persecuting you? Now you stay there. God says, that says worship. Super duty, it's an option. You understand that? That can get you to the next level. Now, let me show you a more excellent way. If you're having that car that you like, that money that you have in your deposit, now take that and give it because love never fails. Did you just get it? It is the option that you have to do to get to the next level. Love never fails. Did you just see there? If you do it like that, if you're just loving unconsciously because it's your duty to love, you get nothing. Because you're not doing it out of conscious choice of what you can give God to worship. So now if someone slaps me, I might give my other cheek. Okay? I might do it. Try it and see. <laughs> but I, because I... I consider it an act of worship. But <laughs> not every day, huh? If things are going a bit rough for me, it has to be a, it has to be in a time where I'm not doing so good. Now at the moment I'm very good, huh? Maybe I'm want a healing in my body. Hmm? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, team come up. Maybe I need a next breakthrough in my business. Hmm? I'll turn to the next other cheek. Hmm? Why? Because I want my business to do well. You think you got away because I'm a good Christian? I know I worship God. You just get what I'm trying to explain to you. It's super erogation. And it never fails. I've done it. Time and time and time and time again, it never has failed me. You understand that? Come on. Let's prophesy. Come on, give me a hand.